Hi everybody, Paul Cameron here from SpeedUpMyJobSearch.com with a clip from our monthly Jobs Driven Networking Group, which meets in Wheaton, Illinois, every third Thursday. Let's take a look. Connor and I, the way, the way that I initially met Connor, if you're familiar with Job Talk Radio, that was a radio show on the air for, I think it was eight years that it was on air, WJJG, and Connor was one of the co-hosts of that show. It was called Job Talk, and we talk all things job, job related on that show, and it was really a lot of fun. Normally, you see this guy up on stage at like a huge corporate event, like for Harley Davidson or a, you know, an, an enormous Fortune 500 company where they, they bring in a, a guest speaker to talk to everyone, and here he is uh, here for us. So we really appreciate you being here, uh, Connor. Now, you're in Naperville? Yeah. No, okay. And they I, they do serve Guinness in Naperville, I hear? Okay. Guinness isn't bad, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. But you've been a general manager in Ireland and a marketing director in the UK and were VP of marketing for uh, Unilever. The one thing that you're going to notice about Connor is whatever he's doing, even in your executive roles, he really, really has a passion for what he does here and in, in, in caring about job seekers and helping those in, in job transition. I would not recommend you use the word unemployed with him. Uh, I assume you still have that same aversion. Uh, he's author of the book, Sheaf Gab, which is a, a wonderful book. Welcome, Connor. So everyone doing well? Yes. Yeah, all right, I'll soon change that, but anyway. I, what I wanna to talk to you today is about a concept on personal branding based around uh, what I refer to as the gift of gab. Now, the Irish, as you know, are famous for the gift of gab, which some people say is our ability to spew out voluminous torrents of words without pausing for breath. Uh, others say it's our ability to paint evocative word pictures that has the listener crying sorrowful tears into the pint of Guinness. In the background, someone is singing Danny Boy. But the gift of gab that I want to talk to you today is a concept based around the acronym GAB, which stands for Goals, Attitude, Behaviour. Goals, attitude, behavior. While you get to the interview because of your resume, your resume does not get you the job, right? It is how you actually connect with that recruiter, how you connect with that employer is what will determine whether or not they will offer you the job. At the end of the day, despite all of the technology that is out there, all of the testing, it really does come down at the end of the day when things are very, very close to gut feel and whether or not the recruiter feels that you are the right fit for their organization and for their company. And what I want to talk to you today is some ideas that will help you to create that right brand and create that right fit or perceived fit for the organization as well. And my background is uh, sales and uh, marketing in the uh, leadership roles in Ireland, the US and uh, in the UK. But the bottom line is people buy brand. And it isn't just buying brand when it comes to cars or when it comes to dishwashers or washing machines that you press 14 times is it, to reduce the water that isn't going to come from the machines, whatever Donald Trump says. Um, people that buy uh, chocolate, they buy beer because of brand. And ultimately, your recruiter, your interviewer, is going to buy you because of the connection that he or she feels with you. I think that when you're going for a, an interview, you need to have a clear idea as to what it is you want the interviewer to say about you after you leave the room. Let's assume that six of you are in for the same job, okay? And you have been interviewed by three people throughout the, the day. When those three people get together, so let's say it's me, Paul, and uh, let's say uh, Al gets, uh, get together. What is it that we will say about Katie? What is it we will say about Diane? What is it we will say about Nancy? And that is what we're looking for, okay? Because we see, yeah, they've all got the same level of experience. They've all got roughly the same kind of industries that they've worked in as well. They're a good fit in that sense, but what is it? So I think that one of the critical things that you need to pay attention to before you go into the interview is have a clear idea as to what it is you want the recruiter to say about you after you leave. And what I actually encourage you to do, and we'll explore this now a bit further, is to write down three attributes that you want the recruiter to say about you. And if I know what I want them to say about me, if I know that teamwork is important, 
I've got to be a figure, figure out how I can get that across. Do I have anecdotes that I can just drop at a moment's notice about teamwork? Do I have anecdotes that I can drop at a moment's notice to show that I'm innovative or that I've got good marketing skills, whatever it is? But it's about having a clear goal and a clear vision as to what success looks like. Actually, when you're looking at the, the ad for the job, or similar jobs, look at the attributes that they are actually referencing in the ads. And say to yourself, all right, what attributes there in this job or in similar kind of jobs do I have that I can actually project very aggressively and positively in the interview? The words you use will determine your behavior. I tell people you should stop going to networking meetings. Ah, and some people are saying, yes, at last. <laughs> Paul is having a heart attack. <laughs> Paul is having a heart attack. All right, why do I say stop going to networking meetings? Let's be honest, you're tired of going to networking meetings, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it really fills you with a thrill when you say, I'm going off to another networking meeting, and your partner is absolutely delighted that you're going off to another networking meeting. <laughs> oh, yippee, all right, so stop going to them. But go to the meeting, that is billed as a networking meeting and treat it as a sales call or treat it as a business development call. If you go on a business development call, you're going to have a different mindset, a different attitude walking into that business development call than if you go to a networking meeting. Do you get the logic of it? Yeah, all right. Because that's what you're doing. You are actually trying to develop business at this, but you forget that. You're just kind of saying, I'm going networking. But I tell you what, if you start getting into the mindset that I'm going to a business development call or a sales call, you'll walk in there feeling more alert, more confident than if you're just going to another networking meeting. People who are, how many people here are in, now this isn't the trick question, how many people here their profession is sales? Okay, you know you make sales calls after sales calls and they often don't come through, but you still go ahead and do it, all right? It's the same with this networking events that I'm suggesting you reframe. Treat them as a sales call. And maybe the first sales call hasn't been successful, but that doesn't mean the next sales call isn't gonna be successful or the one after that. So let's go to this business development meeting at the moment that sometimes is billed as a networking event. What is it you want people to say about you after the business development meeting. Give that man a round of applause. Give that man a round of applause, okay? All right. Here's the thing. The people that you meet at the business development meetings, you know you can walk in and you do your elevator pitch. And then you get an elevator pitch from seven other people. And re you're really paying attention, I'm sure. And you really are, yeah? Okay, all right. some of you are suggesting that it might be a little bit sarcastic there, all right? What do you think might be the most important question you could ask at a business development <coughs> stroke networking meeting? What can I do for you? Yeah, how can I help you? How can I help you? Yeah? If you ask that question, how can I help you at these networking business development meetings, guess what? People are actually going to start paying attention to you. The second element in creating a great brand for you and creating a brand experience with people around you is H, and H is for here. And by here, I mean hear the words thank you at least once a day. I hope that was helpful for you, and please check out the rest of our YouTube channel for more tips and strategies to help you with your job search. Just look for Speed Up My Job Search, all one word, or use the link on your screen now. Now, uh, if you'd like to join us at our next meeting, just go to drivestaff.com slash JDNG for details. Each month, we cover a different aspect of networking to help you sharpen your networking skills and to help you build your network with the other attendees. Now, if the location or the time doesn't work for you, we do have an online version available as well, and you can still network with us in our online private member forum. I'd love to meet you at the next one, so I hope you can make it. Thanks for watching.